Hey, thanks for joining us here at the New Life YouTube page. We'd love for you to stay connected with everything we have going on. If you ever have any questions or you want to know about us more as a church, you can always visit us online at orangecitychurch.com or you can take us everywhere you go by downloading our mobile app anywhere you download your apps. With that being said, let's get connected with Pastor Rick for this week's message. The church wins at the end, right? So uh, Revelations chapter 11, verses 1 and 2, it says, Then I was given a reed like a measuring rod. And the angel stood saying, rise and measure the temple of God, the altar and those who worship there. You don't want to be measured, do you? But leave out the court, which is outside the temple and do not measure it for it has been given to the Gentiles and they will tread the holy city underfoot for 42 months. Measure. I want you to, to kind of see that this morning I was really, I woke up and I was kind of feeling like, you know, what can we say to the church? What can we say to people about this time that we live in and, and how we are handling some of the things that we're, we're handling as, as spiritual people, as those inside the temple? So we're being measured. And don't measure the Gentiles. Don't bother measuring those that are outside for theirs. Is, that what's coming to them is coming to them, right? And I'm not saying those that are not here today or didn't show up for church or, you know, uh, those are not part of the body. They call them the Gentiles. So how do we handle this? How do we deal with this? And, you know, we got to be very careful not to measure other people. And what's happening in our community, what's happening in our, in our, in our, in our country, in our world, is a very natural thing. In the Old Testament, they had those that, uh, the lepers, and the lepers were quarantined. They would take them out of the city, and they would put them in their own little town, and they were quarantined. And I can't, if you find it, that's great, but I can't find anywhere where Jesus went to these quarantine cities. He would go to the city and the sick would come to him. So he was not, I'm not saying he was in fear or he wouldn't, it just doesn't show that in there. Uh, he would, he would, you know, the 10 lepers came to him. And then the women, when they had their cycle every month, they were taken out of the city because they were afraid of infection because of blood and things like that. So they were taken out of the city and they were quarantined. Imagine being quarantined once a month for a week. So these women were also taken out. There was a quarantine for them also. And even in the midst of the religious people and, and Jesus walking through towns and, and healing people, uh, you know, I don't see where they were being criticized for doing that. Now, I, I say all this, and I know that it's sounding a little uh, uh, lack of faith or, or whatever you may call it. The problem is here that we're dealing with something natural, but it's become something very spiritual. So we have to deal with the natural in the natural. There's a germ out there and there's a, a virus or whatever. So naturally, there are things that we can do. And they're asking us, okay, put on a mask. So, okay, we put on a mask, for, even if it's just for the sake of others. So, but what's happening in the spiritual realm is the enemy is using this to divide us. The enemy is using this to cause us to have division amongst ourselves. So what do we do? You don't have faith. Because you're wearing a mask and gloves and you, and you sanitize every three minutes. That may be true, but who are you to judge that person's heart? And the other way around, well, you don't wear a mask, so you don't care for others. No, well, that doesn't, you can't say they don't care for others because you don't know their heart. And what's happening is instead of loving each other and respecting each other for where we're at, wherever that is, we are criticizing each other and we, we claim to be in a better place than others. And you may very well be. Your faith may be in, at a higher place than others, but that does not give you the right to be critical of that person. So how do we handle this? How do we keep from measuring each other and allowing the enemy to continue to come in and cause us to, to be separated and, and you know, to be against each other, especially in the church? We're the worshipers. We're known by our love for Jesus and for each other. And if we're going to criticize each other, come on. Whatever side of that rope, you know, that line you're on is fine. I'm not going to tell you more or less where I'm at because I don't want to influence you. But, you know, I, I do whatever is needed. Now, the, the city, there is ordinances and mandates and things like that. And, you know, I, I've run into people who are like, I'm not doing that. They're taking away my freedom. Well, just, just wear the mask. This will be over soon. Why are you going to spend the night in jail for? For not wearing a mask? You know, to me, that's the simplicity of it all. But... You know, there is a mandate in, a, in, a, uh, in Orange City. Now, Deland did it first, and then Orange City did it, that you have to wear a mask when you're out in public. So our elder Barb uh, contacted me about it, and if you know, 
She keeps stepping into it, but if you know, when you ask me something, I usually ask you to do it. So <laughs> I asked her, hey, could you look into it? And she did. She read it, and then she called the city of Orange City and said that they told them that the, the church itself, uh, the religious place, uh, place of worship, is exempt from wearing the mask if they're at least six feet apart. So just because you're exempt doesn't mean you don't have to wear it if you feel more comfortable wearing it. The 9 o'clock service, we're asking, you know, most everybody's wearing it, and uh, you know, there's a lot less people, and, and people feel more comfortable coming to that. So I want to read, how do we handle this division? How do we handle this spiritual? Because there's a natural thing going on, and we all know that's, that's happening. We can't deny that. It's actually happening, but there's a spiritual thing going on. And, and I, want to, I want to quench this this morning. In Philippians chapter 2, Therefore, if there's any consolation in Christ, if any comfort in love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love. That's what like-minded means. It doesn't mean that we're all going to think the same way about all, all things. We're not all going to be those who wear masks. We're not all going to be those that don't wear masks. We're not all, we're not all going to be like that. We're just we're different people. We don't all dress the same. We don't all look the same. We don't all think the same. We don't, Right? But what he's saying, what is this like-mindedness is that we would having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Having the same love and being of one accord. Not discord, <laughs> right? We need, to, we need to start loving each other more. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition. It's easy to judge others when you want to be selfish. Or conceit. But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself even those that you think that you're better than. Let each of you look out not only for his own interest, but also for the interest of others. Let me, let me, I'm gonna, I didn't read it in the first service. I'm going to read it 5, 6, and 7 real quick. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Listen, this is what he did. Who, being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but, what did he do? Made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a servant and coming in the likeness of men. This was God. And he humbled himself and came before us. Why? Because that was the way that the, spiritu the spirituality of this was that was the way how he was going to unite us. If he came down as God and said, I'm God, repent, or I'm going to crush all of you. That wouldn't bring unity. We would start, Who, who's he going to, gonna, I think he's going to crush you. Because not me. I'm a good person. I, I love God. I, I give my tithes and offerings. I go to church every Sunday. That's not, he's not talking to me. That's not what he meant at all. So I want to encourage you before I get into the, the word that the Lord uh, gave me for this week. Let's love each other. I understand what's going on. I know what's going on. I'm not giving my opinion on what's going on. Let's love each other. And let's be of one accord. And let's not criticize each other for whatever choice we make in the midst of what's happening. It is a natural thing. You know, is there scientific proof that naturally a mask helps keep? Yes. Okay. So if you're more comfortable wearing it, wear it. I will say this. When I go out, I've always, even before all this happened, I hated grabbing a shopping cart. Even before all of this, and I'm not a germ freak or germaphobe or lack of faith. I just, I kept thinking, man, I wonder how many people touch this, how many babies lick this, how many, you know, I, I'm, just, I'm just wondering how many, you know, I, I, did a homeless person use this cart? They don't wash their hands, they can't. And I, I thought all these things, you know, and now it's like, now they have all these things to wipe, so I go, I wipe it down. Does that mean I'm in lack of faith? No, it's an opportunity to wipe down the, the cart that I was always uncomfortable using anyway. <laughs> and you wear a mask when you go out to Walmart, right? It'll keep you in hiding. People won't know you're at Walmart. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So we're going to get into this word. You guys okay? That was a little family talk. I just wanted to kind of unite us a little bit because this is really, the enemy's having a heyday with this thing. And, and it, he really shouldn't. We really should love each other. So today's word is heart habits. Heart habits. Your habits determine the condition of your heart, and your words reveal that condition. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, right? Your habits determine the condition of your heart. Whatever you do in a habitual way every day, whatever you watch, whatever you read, whatever you, those habits, those things that you do on a daily basis, they determine the condition of your heart. 
That's why it says read the word every day, morning, noon, and night. What is that? That's a habit that you create because it determines the condition of your heart. And then whatever you reveal in what you're saying, it re- whatever you say reveals what's in your heart. See, we've picked up some habits this year, and it has affected our heart. And it, if it has affected our heart, then it has affected our faith. Because where does faith come from? From our heart. We have gotten into the habit of watching the news every day to see what the new stats are. What is the president doing about it? What is our governor doing about it? Are there any new mandates and laws? What is the doctor on Facebook saying? And what is that doctor saying? And what is this person saying? And we become, we've grown into a habit of seeking information. And I understand where that comes from. <clears throat> because it is happening around us. You can't ignore it. It's there, right? And I understand where that comes from. But that habit has created something in our heart. And it has stolen something from our heart because we've created this new heart habit of seeking out. We have gotten into the habit of, listen, we have gotten into the habit of washing and sanitizing every chance we get. But we have forgotten to wash our minds with the water of the word and sanitize our sinful nature with the blood of the lamb. You can quote that. That's mine. You have to put my name on it. Right? We've gotten into the habit of washing and sanitizing every chance we get. Good. Keep doing it. I I just cleared that up before we started. But we have forgotten to wash our minds with the water of the word and sanitize our sinful nature with the blood of the lamb. I'm not saying don't do one and do the other. I'm saying do both. Be clean. That's all they're saying is keep yourself clean. right? But not just in the natural, also in the spiritual. Because there's a natural aspect to this. And there's a spiritual aspect to this. We've gotten into the habit of believing everything we read and see on social media when we should be believing what the Word of God says. That, and there's no pun here, that trumps everything. The Word of God. These habits have affected the condition of our heart and in turn have affected our faith. Look at Proverbs chapter 3, verses 1-6. through six. My son... Do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my commands. That word keep is incarcerate. Let your heart incarcerate the commands of God, the word of God. For length of days and long life and peace they will add on to you. Let not mercy and uh, and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them, write them on the tablet of your what? heart and so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man trust in the Lord with all your heart trust in the Lord with what all your heart and lean not on your own understanding in all your acknowledge in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths don't know what to do next go to God seek him with everything you got acknowledge him with everything you have Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. But what are we doing? We're feeding our understanding constantly. There's nothing wrong with finding out what's actually happening. There's something wrong with feeding that and feeding that and feeding that. What happens? You end up with doubt. You end up with fear. See, worldly habits that are picked up while feeding ourselves from a worldly perspective is easy. You hear it. You just accept it. You share it. And you live it. Sounds like Facebook, right? You see it on there. You share it. And then you say, look at this, look at that, look at what this person's saying, look. See, godly habits that are picked up from the word, prayer, and attending church require more than just hearing and accepting. We must keep, everybody say keep, we must keep his commands in our heart, we must what? Write, everybody say write, write them on the tablets of our heart and trust, everybody say trust, and trust in the Lord with all your heart. Keep right and trust it requires something of us it's not just looking at something on uh, some video or something on the news or some doctor some specialist from some special organization i'm not saying that not to do that you want to inform yourself inform yourself just don't reform yourself (laughs) i'm not saying you shouldn't inform yourself you should inform yourself but don't reform yourself and that's what happens when we receive all this stuff it reforms our heart The problem is God does not have all your heart because our new habits have given room to the world and the enemy. God does not want a roommate in your heart. God has given all of him for all of us. 
Come on. Isn't that, isn't that, is that, is that just? I think it's fair. He gave his all. And all he's asking, hey, just give me your all. And he's not asking us to give us his all, our all, so that he can take it from us. We give him his all, and he takes that and makes us better and makes us more blessed and makes us uh, uh, children of God. That's what he does with our all. He doesn't take it from us, right? Sometimes we say, oh, you know, Christians, they don't drink, they don't smoke, they don't do this, they don't do that. They're so square, they're so boring. Christianity is not boring. And I can tell you something else. Christianity is not easy. Oh, that's so easy. That's, no, it's not easy, but it's worth it. It is definitely worth it. Romans 10.10 10 says, For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Look at Mark 11.23 in the Amplified. Truly I tell you, whoever says to this mountain, be lifted up and thrown into the sea, and does not doubt at all in his heart, but believes that he ha- what, he says, what he says will take place, it will be done for him. See, faith... An unwavering belief or trust comes from the heart. But according to Mark eleven twenty three, 23, so does doubt. So how can you have a heart full of faith and still have doubt come out of there? You're feeding the wrong thing. You have given space. We need to reset our hearts. See, what habits are you feeding in your heart? In order not to doubt in all, at all in, in our hearts, we must not allow doubt to get in our hearts. See, these new habits we've picked up on picked up on have given a free pass for doubt to enter our hearts we've opened the door now i'm going to say it again you want to inform yourself inform yourself that's okay you want to look at this and look at the other man but if you if you compare it and you put it to the word of god put it next to the word of god these habits we've picked up on have given a free pass so it's time to reset our hearts And I'm going to explain that word reset in just a moment. We're going to do this out of Psalms 119. We're going to start in verse 112. It says, I have inclined my heart to perform your statutes forever to the very end. And this word inclined means to turn, to cause, to yield, to change direction, or to reset. To reset. I have reset my heart to perform your statutes forever. We need need a heart reset. We need to reset our hearts to perform his statutes. And statutes is basically the word prescription, like, like when you get a prescription of a medicine. Pre is before, inscription is written. That's all that means. So prescript, prescription, written before. So we follow what was written before in his word. Psalms 119 gives us three habits to reset our hearts. You ready? Number one, learn to hate. we're not supposed to hate god is love and we're christians and we love we're not supposed to hate psalms 119 113 i hate the double-minded but i love your law i hate the double-minded but i love your law see in order to love what is right you must hate what is wrong it is not enough to love what is right. It's not enough to say, I hate racism, but, see, when you, you can't have a but in there. Right. I hate racism, therefore I love my brother, no matter what color they are. Because I hate this. I, I love my wife, therefore I hate adultery and pornography and the lazy eye. Because... I love her. Now, I don't do that because I love her. That's awesome. But man, what a double punch. I don't do that because I love her and because I hate this. Because I hate sin. Because I hate this part of, uh, of doing this. We have to learn to love his law. Look at Hebrews 1.9. It says, you have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has set you above your companions by anointing you with the oil of joy. Why? Because I hated wickedness and I loved righteousness. It's not enough to love what is good. You have to hate what is evil. You want to reset your heart? Learn to hate what is evil and to love what is good. Romans 12, 9 says, Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Hating double-mindedness means no buts. Right? No, you can't say I hate this but. I hate racism, but no. 
In order to reset your heart, you must hate where you are and love where you're going. You have to hate the sin that's currently in your life and love what it's going to be like when it's gone. You have to hate where you're at enough to say, I need change, Lord. Search me, O God, as David did. Search me, O God. And if you find any iniquity in me, cleanse me. I love you so much, I want this change. Look in my heart. Take all that nastiness out of there. Reset my heart, Lord. Because I love you, I hate the things of the world. Because I love you, I hate sin. Because I love you, I hate anything that, de- that makes me depart from you, that separates me from you. Number two, you have to know where to hide. Hide? We're Christians. All right? I got the sword of, of the Spirit. I go on the offense. I don't hide. Psalm 119, 114. You are my hiding place and my shield. I hope in your word. See, this hiding place means covering, shelter, or secret place. Know where to seek cover and shelter. To say that an attack is not coming is, is setting yourself up for disappointment. You know, the armor of God says that we have the shield of faith that quenches every dart, uh, every fiery dart of the enemy. What do you do with a shield? You hide behind it. Right. Now, you also have a sword, but there's a time for everything. There's a time where you need to cover yourself, and there's a time where you need to hide. We need to set our hearts to run to God and His shield when the attack comes. When fear hits you, you better seek cover and shelter from the Most High God. In Psalms 91, it it speaks of this, verses 1 through 6. It says, Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. Wow, that, that that scripture alone, we could just preach that. Whoever dwells in the sh- dwells lives all the time, not visits, but dwells. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I want rest. You want rest? I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely. He will save you from the fowler snare and from the deadly pestilence. See, I don't only go there for shelter and to hide. I go there because he covers me and he protects me against the enemy. He's not just a place I hide and hope the enemy doesn't find me. He's a place that I go to and he covers me. And while he's covering me, he protects me. Listen to this. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence or sickness or disease that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. See, our hearts have picked up some habits that cause us to run to our own dark corners in our hearts to hide. We're hiding in the wrong place. We're hiding in the wrong place. We hide behind our masks. Wear the mask. Some of you are wearing masks this morning. Some of you are wearing masks at home, whatever. Wear the mask. I'm not criticizing you for doing that. There is proof in the natural that it protects you and protects others. Why wouldn't you do that? It's not, this is not the new norm, so don't get used to it. Right? God will have his victory. This, this too shall pass. Look at history. They've all passed. Tell me something that was around 100 years ago that's still around today. No, it's all new. Right? It's not new to us. It's new you know, to those that don't know. The enemy keeps trying and trying and trying. Where do we hide? We hide behind blame. So we don't have to face what is our own responsibility. Blame will shield you from the inconvenience of change. Blame will shield you from the inconvenience of change. Because as long as you can blame somebody for your condition, you're never going to change. You know, I always say this. I said, it's okay to have reasons. It's not okay to have excuses. There's a reason why I'm like this. That's fine. We can work with that. But the minute you make it an excuse, you put blame on someone else, you'll never change. Reasons are one thing. 
The reason I'm like this is because of the way I was brought up. The reason I'm like this is because of what my dad did to me or my mom or my uncle. The reason, that's all, re- okay, that's all fine and dandy. There's reasons there. Things have been done to us. Darkness has been put into our lives. We have been hurt. Our heart has been broken. Yes, all these things, I'm not denying these things. Those are reasons. But if you use them as excuses, you'll stay right where you're at. And you'll use your excuses as a shield and you'll run and hide behind them. And you'll never change. Blame, excuse, we run and hide. We hide behind material things. That's a big one in our country. The way we dress and what we drive, we give the appearance of success, but we're really falling apart inside. Somebody said, if I just had money, everything would be fine. Go visit with people who have money. Some are fine. Some are miserable. Some are depressed. They have money to buy anything in the world, yet they're miserable and depressed. Some are sick, would give up all their money. Some have loved ones that are sick, and they would become poor just to have that person be healed. Money's not the answer. Where are you running to? Where are you hiding? We criticize others to hide our own insecurities. We point out the straw in the other one's eyes rather so that we can hide behind our own plank. Right? We point out the straw. We say, look, 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 look at that person. I'm not as bad as them. I hate that. At least I'm not as bad as them. You know why people, some people surround themselves with friends that are worse than they are so they can feel better about themselves. They hide. Where is our hiding place? We all have them. Time to reset. Time to incline our hearts. Time to come out of our hiding place and take refuge in the shadow of the Almighty. <clears throat> excuse me, in the shadow of the Almighty. Come on, let's come out of where we're hiding and hide where the Word says to, in Him. He will protect you. He will keep you. Number three, know how to hope. We've lost this. You know, this is something that we really need to learn how to do because we talk so much about faith and we lose. You know, I have a whole sermon on hope if you want to look it up on, on the app and, and the website. But know how to hope. Psalm 119, 114 says, You are my hiding place and my shield, which we just covered. And the second part of that scripture says, I hope in your word. What are you hoping on? Are you hoping for a vaccine? Yeah, I hope they come up with that. That's not where my faith is, though. Are we hoping that our government does something? Are we hoping that another check comes in the mail because we're struggling? Are we hoping... And, okay, uh, I'm not taking away from any of that. that. That all helps, and you know, but it's, it's like you know, taking an aspirin for an amputated leg. It really is. I hope in his word. That's the answer. That's the, that's the remedy. That's the cure is his word. This word hope is being used in this scripture as a verb. In this context, it's a verb. I hope in your word. It's not just something that I have. It is something that I do. It's not just I I have hope. No, you have to hope. That means it is something that requires an action on your part. Hope puts the faith in your heart to work. Reset your heart into a habit of putting faith to work through hope. Hope is the target. Faith is the arrow that hits that target. You can't exercise your faith without hope. You have to have something to hope for in order to have the faith to achieve that. In Hebrews 11, 1, it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Biblical hope has a reassurance of an, expecta- an expected outcome. I, it's, not, it's not natural hope. I hope. Man, I sure hope. But we don't know what the outcome is. No, 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 no. My hope is based on the Word of God because that's where my faith comes from. So that hope has a a, a reassured outcome. Has a reassured and expected outcome. It's my anchor. We're being blown all over the place. We need to anchor down. Come on. Hebrews 6, verses 17 through 19 says, Thus God, determining to show more abundantly to the heirs of the promise of the immutability, or unchangeableness is what it means, of his counsel, confirmed it by an oath. God gave us an oath. That by two immutable or unchangeable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, 
we might have strong consolation or great confidence is what that means, who have fled for refuge to lay hold of the hope set before us. This hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which enters the presence behind the veil. We need to be in the presence now more than ever before. How do we do that? By anchoring ourselves to the hope of what God said. He is not a liar. He's going to do what he said he's going to do. He is unchangeable. You think he's up there going, oh my, COVID, I didn't know this was coming. Come on. Not a surprise to him. He already has an answer for it. And it's the same answer that he's had for any other attack that the church has been under or, or his people have been under is his word, faith, him. You reset your heart habits by using the anchor of hope. God made some promises and we believe that he keeps his promises, but we have picked up some habits that have caused us to waver and be pushed around by the media and by social media and everything else, by the media, the world. Even our friends and family have, have caused us to waver. But today, we reset our hearts to hope again, which will anchor us to his promises. Listen, again, I'm not denying these things. I'm not saying that we go head on and, and, you know, and let people spit on us you know, and go to somebody who has COVID. Come on, give it to me. God, get, No, that's just foolishness. You're just tempting God. But we live in this world, and we're out there. We need to reset our hearts. Come on, let's remove that fear and that doubt out of there. Do we still do the certain things in the natural that we should? Yeah, sure, that's wisdom. But don't do them. What happens is as we do those things, they become what? A habit. And that habit changes the condition of our heart. And the change of the condition of our heart keeps, gives way to doubt and fear and gives room to that. And God does not share your heart with anything or anybody else. He gave his all, and he wants you to give your all. I'm going to end with this. Jeremiah 29, 11. I'm going to read it in the New American Standard Bible. And then I'm going to read it in the message. I love it in the message. For I know the plans that I have for you, says, declares the Lord. Plans for welfare and not for calamity, to give you a future and a hope. This is God speaking to us through the prophet. He says, listen, I have a future and a hope for you. I don't have trouble coming your way. I didn't have that. That wasn't my plan, and it still isn't my plan. Listen to it in the message. Jeremiah 29, 11. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> yes, Lord. I have it all planned out. Plans to take care of you, not abandon you. Plans to give you the future that you hope for. We may not, we're not living the future right now. We're living the present. And in the present, things don't look so good. Things are kind of messed up. And I don't like the way things are going. Yeah, but there's a future. And he's planned it all out. And in that future, there's good things. He knows what he's doing. <laughs> I love that. I know what I'm doing. Right. Can you imagine God in the middle of the night? You're like, oh, God, help me, Lord. I don't want to go outside. And... I know what I'm doing. <laughs> yes, Lord. That would be my answer. Yes, Lord. I am so sorry. Forgive me. Help me reset my heart. To be a heart of faith. To be a heart that believes that you are my refuge. That's where I'm going to hide. And I'm going to reset my heart because I, I hate sin. And I hate the things of this world because I love you. I hate wickedness. I hate double-mindedness. It says, hate double-mindedness. Don't be double-minded. There's a scripture that actually uh, 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 translates double-mindedness as witchcraft. Being double-minded is witchcraft. Imagine that. That can't be from God. I don't want to be double-minded. I want to be set on him and find refuge in him. Learn how to hate. Learn where to hide. And learn to have hope again. Let's reset our hearts this morning. Stand to your feet. We thank you, Lord. Lord, forgive us for allowing these things to come into our lives and to allow them to shake us this way and move us this way or the other, Lord. And forgive us for uh, not... Uh, resetting our hearts but we do this this morning lord we reset our hearts to your word and we trust you lord although we do in the natural what needs to happen in the natural in the spiritual we are standing on your rock 
We are standing on your word. We have sought refuge in, in your fortress, Lord, and under the, 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 under the wing of the almighty God, Lord. We are protected by you, Lord. So we just thank you. We love you, and we reset our hearts today. We remove anything that doesn't belong there, Lord. Come on, wash us and cleanse us this morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Wash our minds and sanitize our hearts. <laughs> Come on, whenever you wash your hands, let's, let's remember that. Wash my mind with the water of the word and sanitize my hearts through the blood of the lamb. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We love you. We praise you in the powerful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you for joining us. I hope you enjoyed the message. Please make sure to subscribe, download the app, and you'll have access to many messages that I'm sure will bless you. And as always, you will never be the same.